Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Today is a mega video where I take all of my fall DIYs so far this season and put them into one mega video. Now let's get crafting. This DIY, I found it from inspiration when I was scrolling through some Magnolia Home decor items. I saw this really cute crate that was a really dark coal color and it said Magnolia across the front. It was in black letters, but you're going to see I'm going to do white letters to make it stand out even more. I know all of us love the Magnolia home decor and I wanted to show you all how you could get that look so affordable for your home that you do not have to spend a ton of money. So here I am, I am simply taking two packs of these thicker tongue depressor sticks that you can get in the craft section at the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna take six for one side, as you see there, six for the other side. I cut off the rounded parts, and then I'm gonna take one more stick cut it down to size and add that on the front and the back. Now you can see here that I've repeated that process three times because this is gonna be the two long walls of the box. And then this last one is gonna be the bottom. So I'm actually gonna add some more supports on the bottom of that so it's really strong. If you have any hangovers, just go ahead and snip those off with your scissors. Once you've got that done, you're gonna work on the sides of the box where it's the shorter part and we're going to do the same thing we're going to cut down six of them to the desired size we want put a stick on the back to support them all and once you've got two of those you can start assembling the box again this is so easy and it only cost me about a dollar and five cents because i didn't really even use the second pack i only had a couple that i needed to pull from it so now we're gonna go ahead and start assembling the sides. You're going to add glue on those three parts for the bottom, just like you saw, and you're gonna hold it in place. And right now it looks a little flimsy, like it's gonna break, but by the time we're done with this thing, it's gonna be super strong and sturdy. Now you're gonna take some more glue and you're gonna simply go in to the crevices of the inside of the box, add some more glue, put down some more popsicle sticks, to really strengthen it, add some more glue. I was really generous with the glue on the inside. Then at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add on the sides of the box, or I guess the insides of the box. I don't know what you would call that, but you can see here the smaller part. And I'm gonna just hold that all into place, gluing everything, and then creating once again the supports on the inside. Now the outside does not look polished, and this is where it really starts to come together. We're gonna take some more of those sticks, we're gonna cut them down to size and we're gonna frame it out. I think framing it out is where it really makes it look high end, like you bought it from the store or you picked it up from Magnolia and you probably paid a ton of money for it <laughs> because we love that look so much. So here I am, I'm just framing it all out, cutting everything down to size, adding in glue where I need to, and at this point it really starts to come together and looks like an actual crate that you could pick up and purchase at the store. So once you've got everything framed out and it's nice and sturdy and strong and everything is dry, you're then gonna go ahead and move on to painting it. Now, like I said, I was going off of the inspiration that I saw from Magnolia, so I went with a really dark slate coal kind of color. I basically took black and added in some white until I got the color that I wanted, and I just generously painted it all over, making sure I got everything. Now, I didn't have white letters, and I wanted to keep this all Dollar Tree products, so I took the word Magnolia, put it on a piece of paper, painted them white, and added them to the front of my box. Once that was on there, I wanted to make sure they stayed, so I went ahead and Mod Podged the whole box, making sure it was nice and sealed, and now I can display it for fall. I hope that you are enjoying this video today and all of these new DIYs that I've put together for you. Now, if you haven't heard, over on Instagram, I host a weekly challenge where you can share projects that you've made with your Dollar Tree supplies. It's called the Dollar Tree DIY Tour. I co-host it with my friend Shayna. It's really easy to do. You simply create a post 
with an image and then you use a certain hashtag. If you're interested, come on over and find me underneath my name, Heidi Sambel. I'll give you all the rules to play along, but it's really fun and it's such a great way to connect with other crafters and share your beautiful things on the internet. For this project, we are gonna be taking these little buckets or potting pots from the Dollar Tree. They have these around springtime and I've been holding on to them and I thought I could turn this into something really cool. So we are going to make a mini urn that you would see out in the front of a porch. I thought this would be so cool. So we're using some E6000 and some hot glue and together these make the cutest little urn and we're going to make it look more like a cement or concrete urn. I thought that would be really pretty to do that. So once those are all glued together and they're nice and set and hard, then we're gonna take some white paint and come in and give it a quick coat of white paint. Now I did this because I wanted to allow this wood filler, this putty that you can get from the Dollar Tree, I wanted to give it something to bond to, to hold it nice and together. And I went all over the whole thing, creating a lot of depth and texture. This is what's gonna make it look like like it's cement or concrete where it's a nice beautiful texture on it. Then we're going to come in with a bunch of different tones of gray until we get the desired look that we want. You're going to add in some darker, some lighter, and then at the very end you're going to bring in the last which is white and you're going to lightly dry brush all over it. Once that's all done, I sealed it with some Mod Podge to make sure nothing chipped over time and it stayed nice and strong and sturdy looking like it's concrete. And then I'm going to come in and add my piece of foam, push it down into place and add some hot glue glue. This is going to allow it to stay in place if it ever gets knocked over and things don't fall apart. I like my stuff to just be nice and sturdy whenever I make things. Now I'm going to take that really whimsical dainty flower that they have at the Dollar Tree. I stuck that in first and then I'm adding in this really pretty leaf pumpkin option they had at the Dollar Tree this year. I loved these. I thought they were so cute and when you cluster them together they look like a mini tree. I thought this was so fun because when I brought all of them together at the base and wrapped it with twine that became the look of a trunk and all together it just looks like a mini tree inside of this urn which is so cute to put on a table somewhere in your home. So make sure you wrap your twine nice and tight and then at the bottom make sure you add some glue so everything holds into place and then you're going to take some of this moss that they have and you're gonna just add in some hot glue and keep massaging it in. Make sure you use a popsicle stick so that you don't burn your fingers. That's what I like to do whenever I get into tricky parts so I don't hurt myself. And you're just gonna keep massaging it into place so that you get it nice and packed in and then you're ready to put it out for decor. For this DIY, we're going to be using this super popular sign that is going on over at the Dollar Tree. Everybody's been snatching and picking these up and using them in their crafts and videos. I have so many friends that have been making beautiful things with them and I wanted to take my try at it. You could leave it as is because it's really cute, but I wanted it to be more neutral and I had a really cute quote that I wanted to use on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover the backside with a piece of felt so that it just cleans up the backside and the look of it. And then I'm gonna add some white paint all over on this side that was raw and ready to be painted and making sure to paint on the sides as well to really clean up the look. And then I used my Cricut and I'm just trying transferring on what I cut out with it and I will say that this particular font it kept wanting to pull up and so I was just really taking my time I love this font I thought it was so pretty and I wanted to just you know take my time and transfer it on and then once I had that all stuck down I ended up making sure I Mod Podged everything. I always, I know you guys are gonna think I'm a spaz, but I always Mod Podge everything because I just love things to be sealed and on there without anything falling off or getting bumped or messed up over time. Plus, I also think it keeps it where you can like wipe it and clean it really easy if you want to, if you display it and it gets dusty. Anyway, 
that's just me. But I thought this quote was so cute. You are the pumpkin to my spice. <laughs> I just thought that was so sweet. So I'm going to take some of these curved leaves and I'm going to just circle around them. I thought that this would look really high end and beautiful. Once I went all the way around, I took some greenery and I'm going to use it on both sides. I really liked that it was nice and full and I wanted it to kind of hang a little bit. And I'm going to take my staple gun and I'm going to just staple those right in place because I'm not always the biggest believer in hot glue friends. I know. <gasps> Gasp. <laughs> but really it comes off sometimes and so I like to use my staple gun when I can and it's thick enough to puncture into it to make sure it's nice and sturdy. Then I added a pumpkin, some more of those curly cube wires and we're ready to put it out for our decor. If you're new to my channel and you are enjoying this video, don't forget to click the subscribe button, the notification bell, and to give it a thumbs up. I would love to have you join me here on my channel and all of my crafting friends as we celebrate each new season with fun DIYs. Plies we're going to be using for this DIY. I am going to be using a plunger, these two cute crates that they have in the craft section at the Dollar Tree, and then some leftover long painter sticks that I've cut down to size that are left over from a previous project. We're going to take some wood glue and some hot glue and put it all over one of the sides of these crates and then we're going to just bring them together because we're going to be creating a super cute summer tray that is so farmhouse inspired and it's super easy because they already have these crates at the Dollar Tree and they have so many of them they have different things on the sides as cut out. Now I'm gonna go with these long painter sticks to create the handle right at the star point. I'm just gonna center it right in the middle of the box, adding some hot glue and some wood glue. Again, like I like that long-term, short-term hold so it really is built well. And then we're gonna just put that right on the center just like I did the other one. And then we can go ahead and create the crossbar up at the top. That's where our plunger comes in handy. We're gonna cut off the screwed end that's engraved into the wood, and then we're gonna cut off the other side so we get the right sizing, and then use some sandpaper to sand it down. Now I'm using my drill to pre-jill a hole so that it doesn't splinter the wood on my handles for my painter sticks, because that can happen. Screwing in the screws, and then I'm gonna use my staple gun to go in and just make sure I secure the bottom just a little bit better because I like things to have a nice strong hold. Now today for my summer DIY daily, I am spotlighting Leah and friends, you are going to adore her as much as I know I already do. Her name is Leah at Southern Yankee DIY and her covers, just her covers alone, are so eye-catching. And then when you click on her video, you are gonna see how fun she is, just so full of spirit and life, and just such a cute Southern girl. She has the best lighting in her videos, and her projects are so stinking cute. They are always farmhouse inspired. I love her DIYs, and they're just so fun and easy to follow. Her steps are really friendly to follow. Make sure you go over and give her some love. Give her some thumbs up. Let's help her channel grow. She's been around for about seven months on YouTube, and I'm just shocked that she hasn't even hit 2,000 subscribers yet. This is the reason why I love doing these spotlights, because she just deserves a shout out. So let her know that I sent you over and give her some love. Our next step is now to take some water some brown paint and some black paint and mix it together to create a wood stain. Now I know we could use regular wood stain for this but I just like using this so much more because I can wash it off my hands really easy and I don't even have to wear gloves. But for summertime I really have been digging on a darker wood. I just think that this is so pretty for the summertime. Now you can stop at this point or you can distress it and take a little further like you know I like to do it here on my channel. So once it was all dried and nice and dark, I went in with a little bit of white paint and simply distressed the sides. The supplies for this DIY are gonna be four of these jars from the Dollar Tree, which I love buying them there. I think these jars are so cute. Some fabric, I'm gonna go with a black and white 
buffalo check and then some florals now some flowers have been on my mind I think it's just because they're so happy and I need that sunshine in my life right now while I'm still trying to be really good about staying in and sheltering at home during this whole thing so I'm now going to take some foam core after I have spray painted my jars white I'm gonna insert those in and I'm gonna take this fabric and I'm going to cut four strips just like you see me doing here and I'm gonna use that to tie around the necks of these jars now friends I'm doing this project today because I want you to know that sometimes craft projects can be really overwhelming too big too big too complicated too crazy right but I also want you to not be discouraged if you're a new crafter I want you to try crafting I want you to try doing things that are just cute to make your house a home so here I am I just spray painted these jars white and now I'm taking some fabric and simply just wrapping them around and I'll tell you they sell these jars over at home decor stores for way way too much money I made these whole arrangement that you're gonna see here at the end for maybe about so here I am I have painted them I've tied these little scarfs I would say maybe around the necks of these jars and then I'm now gonna insert some foam and then I found this new floral at the Dollar Tree. I was just so in love with these. They're so pretty. There are other colors too. They definitely have them in other colors. I think there's like a really pretty mauve color, a blue color, maybe a purple color. I can't remember. If you go on the Dollar Tree's website, you can see all the different colors that they have, but I love these. They almost look like a very, very open rose or a peony I think they're so pretty so I'm just adding those in and then I'm popping in one sunflower because I just want that little pop of sunflower in there I'm adding in some of these cute berries and then at this point you know I just am playing with it having fun adding more things I also decided to add in a cotton stem I don't think they had these last year at the Dollar Tree but it's a really long stem and they are so cute I decided that I wanted two of my jars to have these in it so I'm just gonna pop those right in and then at this point you can display these however you want all over your home but remember that tray I am going to use them in this tray to corral them together because I just think they're so cute to put this on a table somewhere in my home or an entryway I just I, I love how they look all together so I hope you try these DIYs out today because they are just so fun and these particular ones that I did today are really easy to follow and I hope you give crafting a try because it's meant to help us relax and just do something that we're proud of to bring into our home on August 14th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time the theme is back to school now I know this is such a tricky subject right now for all of us because we don't even know if our kids are going back to school or not in the classrooms but I thought it would be really fun to do teachers gifts or home decor or things that look a little back to school that lead into fall I just thought this could be such a cute theme so I hope you will play along this DIY we're going to be using this home sign from the craft section at the Dollar Tree and then nine of these stacking blocks as well as a long thick skewer and all together we're going to create a cute way to display pictures in your home so we're going to take that home sign and we're going to drill out some holes at the bottom don't drill all the way through we just want to make sure we go deep enough to be able to insert two dowels that we're going to cut down to the exact same size put in some wood glue so it's nice and secure and nice and strong in there this wood glue is now being carried at the Dollar Tree which I was so excited to find that because I love using wood glue because it really does make things nice and strong and then while the wood glue is drying and setting I'm going to use some hot glue just to make sure that it stays in place and then over on those blocks we're going to take the nine of them and we're going to use E6000 and hot glue 
this is going to be able to bond them together and the only reason why i didn't use wood glue on this was because these stacking blocks half of them are raw wood and the other half have paint so i figured that this would be a great way to make sure that they don't come apart since it's got that paint coat on it if you use the raw wood ones i would recommend using the wood glue instead of the e6000 but go ahead and just glue them all into place flat onto a table and then just keep wiping away any excess glue because you don't want that to be spewing out. And now at this point, we are gonna start working on assembling the top and the bottom. Take those skewer sticks, line them up to the spot you want, use a pencil to create the drill hole line. And then you can see here that I used a painter stick to make sure I didn't go through my table because, well, that would just be a tragedy. <laughs> no one wants to put a drill hole in their table. And once you've got those two drills all the way through the base, go ahead and add in your wood glue and then just use a little bit. You don't want it to be spewing out all over the place. This glue does a really good job. And then you're gonna just go ahead and take the skewers, poke them down into the hole, make sure they're in there nice and snug. And then once it's dry, you can go ahead and move on to painting. I'm gonna use a bigger brush and a smaller brush to be able to get in all the crevices. I recommend using the smaller brush because it can be a little bit tricky. This home sign has a lot of really small tight corners and I think it just looks so polished when the whole thing is covered in the same color paint. So go ahead at this point, you can paint it whatever color you want. How cute could this be to customize this for your home and whatever colors you like to decorate with? And then I'm going to take some twine, a thinner twine, and I'm going to tie two lines across so it looks like a little clothesline. I thought this looked so farmhouse chic. I don't know why I thought this was so cute, but I just love the way that it looked. So you're gonna tie across those two. And then to take it a step further, I'm gonna put on four bows. I thought that this would be such a cute detail to add to these little clotheslines. Add some clothespins and some photos and display. If you're enjoying this mega video, I bet you would probably enjoy another themed video or this upcoming Christmas season. I have a video from last year and a couple other fall ones too. I'm gonna link some at the end of this video and down below in my description box. So if you're interested, head on down there and check those links out. We are now going to be taking these plain glass jars from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna turn them into something really special. I love decorating these jars. I just think it is the easiest way to create some really cute custom decor around your home for any holiday. Now we're going to take them outside and spray paint them all white to make sure that it has a nice jump off point. The spray paint really bonds well to the glass versus the acrylic paint. It'll just come right off. So first I spray painted them all white and then you saw that I painted one jar completely red on the outside and then the second jar I'm going to go around about a fourth of the jar and I'm going to paint that part a pink color because that's going to be an eraser and then on the third jar I'm I'm going to take a light blue and I'm going to go around with my fine tip brush and I'm going to create lines to make it look like a piece of school paper. So I did about five lines on this jar. You can see here that I'm putting one down towards the bottom, making sure that I went all the way around it as straight as I possibly could. Then I'm gonna take another fine tip brush and I'm gonna make a red line coming down so that you make it look like a piece of paper. And then we're gonna put a grade on it because we wanna encourage people around us to get those A pluses during the school year. And then once that one is all done, you put it aside and let it dry. Now let's go back to our pencil jar. This one's a little bit trickier because it has more things to paint on it, but I promise it's worth the work. So here I am, I'm putting on this nice tan color. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna come back in with my mustard yellow and I'm gonna paint that part around to represent the wood part of the number two pencil. And once you've got that all the way painted around and it's nice and smooth, you're then going to go ahead and take a smaller brush and create a wavy line at the top to make it look like where you've sharpened the pencil and it has chipped away at the yellow paint. So just go all the way around making your bumps. And then once you've got that part done and the yellow is all nice and smoothed out, you're then going to take some black paint up at the very top where you would screw on the lid and you're going to paint that part black. This is going to represent the lead of the pencil 
And then down between the pink and the mustard yellow, we're gonna take a pretty gray, and we're gonna just go around with a fine tip brush to create that metal casing around the eraser that holds it onto the pencil. So at this point, we now can add on our number two for our pencil. Just take your time. I really love doing this part. I thought this was so cute and really where it just started to shine and it came to life. So I did my my number letters and then now I'm going to come back in with my two. I made sure my two is the same size as the N. The O is actually a little bit smaller and then you've got that little dot that's in between them. So now at this point we want to make sure we seal it so that nothing chips off over time. So I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm just going to go over all three jars and once I've got a nice coat on all of them and I went inside of the lip of the jar just a little bit to make sure it's all sealed on there really well and then I just put them to the side to dry. Now we're going to take our paper jar and we're going to put a piece of foam inside and we are going to start filling this up with all kinds of pretty fall florals from the Dollar Tree. I wanted to take a minute and just say thank you everyone as well for being so supportive if I stepped away for two weeks and had to cancel my summer DIY spotlight series. Many of you know from seeing my community tab that I had a family member fall terribly ill where they almost passed away. It was the scariest experience. It was one of my siblings and she is doing so much better. She is just so dear to me and I'm so happy she's doing better. I wanted to thank all of you for the prayers and the love that you sent her way and my family's way while we were wading through some of the most scariest times of her life. Anyway, thank you all so much for your love and your prayers for her. I just really appreciated it. So once your paper jar was filled with all kinds of pretty florals, then we're going to go back to the apple jar and we're going to add on some of that grass skirt raffia and then we're going to add on some of those leaves that we're going to cut out from the fabric and we're just going to really just give it some personality. I think this jar is just as cute as the other two. I love that it looks like a little apple and then after you've got your leaves snugged in there and glued in place I decided that it just needed something else and I love buttons. I don't know about all of you but I think buttons are just the cutest thing to add. So I picked up a little jar of buttons from the Dollar Tree. They're usually at the very front checkout area and then I'm gonna just glue that right onto the bow and it's ready to go. I have another channel called Heidi Sambo Home and it is such a fun place where I share DIYs that I'm decorating with in my house. I also show a lot of seasonal transformation in my home whenever I'm getting ready to decorate and just overall some fun cleaning motivation to get you going and loving your home each new day. For this project we are going to be using three different fabrics, orange, yellow, and white, three sticks from the Dollar Tree, three of these foam cones and two wood stars. To start we're going to go ahead and fill those wood holes that were drilled out from the twine that was able to be able to hang up the star. We're going to fill those in with some wood filler from the Dollar Tree and then we're going to slowly with the right size that you need for your dowel sticks that we're going to be putting into this, we're going to drill out two holes. Make sure you don't go through your craft table because that would just be terrible. And I'm going to add in some wood glue as well as some hot glue. Now I found wood glue at the Dollar Tree which was really exciting. So look in your craft section to see if you can find some in your store. And then I'm going to just put these two dowel sticks down inside of there and hold them until they nice and straightly glued hot in place. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take that third stick and we're going to put it into the top cone and then into the bottom tone to create a taller tree because we're going to create two different heights of this tree that we're making, this candy corn tree. And once you've got those nice and dried, you're going to go ahead and move on to your fabric. So I'm going to create a slit at the top and then just rip it all the way down. I love how it has this rough edge to it. It gives it that farmhouse look for the fall and Halloween time. Time. 
I am not a big fan of the creepy side of Halloween. I've said that before here on my channel. I like the more whimsical side of the cute pumpkin faces and the friendly witch and the cute cat and candy corn, pumpkins, all of that stuff. I'm not into the blood and the gore. Ooh, that's just not my thing. But I thought this would be a cute project for anyone who is along that same wavelength of thinking as me or you can also turn it into more darker colors for a Halloween more gorier side of Halloween if that's your jam too no judgment <laughs> it's just not my thing so you can see here that I'm basically taking those fabric strips and I'm pleating all the way around my cones and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two yellow two orange and then two white and when you get to the very top of your cone you're going to want to make sure that it's nice and finished at the top where you're taking your time pleating it and going nice and close to the top you're going to see it right here where I'm just kind of pushing it up towards the top and the very last one it's a pretty thin slit of the white because you want it to be able to come nice and close to the top and then I'm going to add a cute button for a little bit of a nice pop at the top, a cute little detail. It was a little orange button. And then we're going to add it onto our stick and our star. Make sure it's nice and straight before you let it go so it's not crooked. And then come in with some white paint or whatever color you want to paint your star and your stick at the bottom. I went with white and I did two coats to finish the look. Our next DIY is going to be using this galvanized bucket and these florals that the Dollar Tree has out right now. They are meant for the fall time, but I thought they lend well for summer as well. So I thought they would be so cute paired up together. We're going to take off the handle from this bucket. Now beware, this handle can be a little bit of a beast because the wire is really, really strong. I like to hold on to those wires because I can use them for other projects. But I'm going to go ahead and remove it. You can decide to leave the handle on if you want to, but I personally wanted to remove it. So here I am. I'm going to take this brown paint and I'm going to just simply tap it up all along the edge because we're going to give this bucket a really pretty rusted look. I thought this was so cute for summer decor that lends well going into the fall time. Once you've tapped around your brown paint in all the desired areas that you like, you're then going to take a piece of foam square from the Dollar Tree and you're just going to hot glue that down in there and then you can add in your florals. Now I'm cutting them away from their stem, the original stem that they come on. I never like putting them in like that because they look so fake. But when you cut them away with some wire cutters and place them down in there individually as sprigs, it looks so much more realistic and it looks high end doing it this way. So I'm going to just fill in as many as I would like and then I'm going to take one of these little garden sticks. I pick up a whole bunch of these little signs during the springtime and I just hold on to them all throughout the year because I love how they look when you put them on buckets or signs or just, just things. It's a cute little finishing touch. I picked up this wood decor piece from the Dollar Tree and it's so cute. It's meant to be a pumpkin, but I realize this shape is very similar to an apple as well. So what we're going to do is this is going to be a two for one project where one side is an apple and then the other side is going to be a pumpkin. Now on the apple side, we're going to customize it and we're going to put a teacher's name on it. I thought this would be so cute to give as a gift. And these home decor pieces that they have at the Dollar Tree, there's tons of them. And I haven't been seeing people picking them up because I think people just don't really know what to do with these things. But how cute could this be to be able to hold pens or pencils inside of it or highlighters for a teacher? You could even put some florals inside of it. But I just thought it would be so cute to customize this as a nameplate for a teacher. So on the back side, 
where the pumpkin is. I guess it's actually supposed to be the front side. We are going to go ahead and distress in a couple different tints of orange because I thought this would be really pretty and bring it to life. And then on the other side and the box inside, I painted the whole thing completely red. Then I'm going to take a little bit of black, some brown and some water and create a stain because I thought this would be really pretty to do a dark wood color on this. And we're going to just simply go over the base. I was really cautious trying not to get any paint onto that piece so that the stain would take nicely. And then we're going to also paint the stems of the pumpkin and apple, making sure that those are nice and colored and cute. Then once you've got that all done and everything is dried, you are then at this point going to go ahead and get out that pencil so we can sketch on a name. Now, now I'm going to be actually doing my sister's name. She is a secretary at a high school for one of the grades and I thought this would be so cute for her to put on her table. So we're going to go ahead and just write on her name. First I traced it out with a pencil making sure I liked how the font looked and now I'm going to go back in with a very small fine tip brush and I'm going to just simply paint on with the paint some white paint. Take your time on this part. I love hand painting letters. I've said it before here on my channel plenty of times. I think you all know if you're returning that I just love doing these types of projects because it's so therapeutic to me to paint letters. I don't know why but it's almost like I slow down my breathing and I'm just really focused and still and there's something about that just makes me feel so calm especially right now with everyone's anxiety so raised and high I definitely am at that place right now in my life so I was enjoying hand painting all that on and then once that was dry I'm gonna go ahead and take some of the hula skirt grass that I had left over from the summertime and I made some darling little raffia bows and then I'm gonna just add on some leaves now you'll see a little bit later in this video I didn't have green fabric and I wanted to create some leaves so I painted some canvas type drop cloth fabric green and I'm just gluing these on after it had dried and I cut them into leaf shapes then when you're all done go ahead and display Our supplies are gonna be two of these garden hang baskets. They have these out around springtime and I bought a whole bunch of them knowing that this could be turned into a pumpkin. I was so excited to figure this out because I haven't really seen anybody do this. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen anybody use these to turn this into a pumpkin. It is the easiest DIY ever. You're gonna just take off the wire chains and then you're going to line up the lines on the baskets and then with some zip ties from the Dollar Tree, you're just gonna zip tie every single joint where the bars line up. Then you're gonna take your scissors and you are going to snip off the rest of the zip tie and make sure you take the part that has that little square on the end where it fastens all together, twist that inward so you don't see it sticking out. Once you've got that done, go ahead and take a jar lid that they have at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to just use some E6000 so that this stays together nice and tight because this is going to become the top of our little pumpkin so we can go ahead and add a stem to it and decorate it how, however you would like, honestly. Then you're going to take some hot glue on the inside and just glue that in place. Now this tool, I'm going to be showing it a little bit later on. I've showed it here before on my channel. It's called a Cropodile. It's used for scrapbooking and fastening on eyelets. I love this tool, but you can see that I used it because it's able to punch through metal like nothing. I mean, it is like using a hole puncher going through paper. So I went ahead and punched two holes so I could take some more zip ties and then fasten that to the top without having to worry about it coming off later. Then I took it outside and spray painted a really pretty fun orange color. You could do this whatever color you want for your pumpkin. And then I'm going to scrape off a little bit of the paint at the top because I want to make sure that it bonds well to the actual metal versus the paint 
over time that can peel away and break off really easy. So then I'm going to take one of these little wood stumps that they sell at the Dollar Tree in their floral section, glue that on, and then I'm going to take some of this greenery and staple it to the backside of that little log. And I did that because I didn't want to worry about these falling off over time and stapling it on there is gonna hold everything together nice and tight. I added some more hot glue and then I'm coming in with this bead garland that you all know that I love here. You're gonna see this a lot throughout this video because I think it's so cute when it's coiled and it makes it look like a pumpkin vine all curly and cute. Then once all that was in place, I added a bow and you are ready to decorate your home. Our next DIY are going to be using these wood squares or wood blocks that you can get from the crafter square at the Dollar Tree. I took some really pretty, I know it's going to sound weird, but buttery orange or I guess sherbet orange. I wanted it to be a really pretty creamy look to it. I don't know why I'm going with creamy in this word, but that's what we're going to roll with. And then I'm gonna just put on one coat of paint. I wanted to make sure that the wood grain was still showing through. I loved the idea of that still popping through. Once those were dry, I'm gonna take some of these little logs that you can get in the floral section at the Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to simply glue them right to the top of these cute little squares that we just created that are orange. We're making little square pumpkins, and these are so easy to make. These would be the cutest thing to give to someone for a gift if they love fall season, or you just wanna make them for your own home. And it can be so cute because you can even put a picture on it or little pumpkin faces, however you wanna decorate these. Now I'm gonna take some of these garland beaded wires that, again, I told you I was going to use them a lot in this video because I love them so much. I think they just work so well on pumpkins. I'm going to coil that around, glue it in place, and they're ready to be used. Getting back to my apple theme, I'm going to take these darling little terracotta pots. You, know, you can find these all over the place and I definitely did not pay 99 cents for them. I got them from my thrift store and I paid about 50 cents for each one because it was a half off day. So I found two of these and I thought how cute would it be to paint one of them red, the top and the bottom, and then one of them green. Now earlier I mentioned that I took some of this canvas fabric and I painted it green to create myself some leaves. Here I am, I'm showing myself painting that canvas or drop cloth type fabric and I'm just going to paint it all green and add in some different shades to make it look like a leaf color so when I cut them into leaves it'll look really cute. So here are my terracotta pots. When you take the bottom water tray and put it on top it turns into an apple. I think this is so cute and you can do it with all different sizes of the terracotta pots. The bottom and the pot always match up really well almost perfectly to make it look like an apple. So here I am I'm gonna add on some E6000 and some hot glue onto these little wood logs that you can get from the Dollar Tree. They're in a little Little bag and we are going to just glue that right on top of the apple or the terracotta pot lid <laughs> and we're gonna tie on some raffia that is left over from a grass skirt from from the summertime and we're gonna just tie on a bow once you've got your two bows on you're gonna go ahead and add on some little details that you'd like you could leave it at this point and just stop but you know me I always love to take it a little bit further so now I'm gonna take a leaf and I'm gonna sneak it underneath the bow and I'm gonna use a little bit of a yellow green red look because I love how it looked on the green terracotta pot and then I'm gonna take that fabric earlier that I painted, cut out a couple of leaves, and I'm gonna add that onto my red pot.
For this project, we are going to be taking this super popular witch form hat. I have seen many people trying to find these and I've seen a lot of friends also using them and turning them into hats. But we're going to turn ours into a cornucopia flower front door decor piece. Or it could also be like a bundle of flowers, however you want to look at it. But we are going to take it and cut it apart. We're going to take off the rim of the hat. We don't need that part. And then it's going to want to break right here on this piece. If it does, it's not a big deal. You're going to just take some twine, glue it, and wrap it around until it holds those two pieces together. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be covered up by the burlap, which we're going to be using next. So now at this point, go ahead and take out your burlap and you're going to just start gluing it around to create that cornucopia look. And the cool thing about this wire, you can also bend it and shape it and twist it however you want to make it look where it's more of a curved look. I just kept mine straight. So this is why I'm saying that maybe it looks like a bundle of flowers too for the fall time. It's just whatever <laughs> your preference is and what you think. But I was going for a cornucopia. I like how it turns out. I'm gonna take this really pretty mesh brown color and I wrapped it all around to give it that woodsy look on it. This part is so quick, so fast to create it. This project seriously took me maybe like less than 10 minutes to do and it's so beautiful at the end to put out on your front door or somewhere in your house if you want to hang it up. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to stuff it with the florals that we like. The Dollar Tree had so many pretty florals this year and I had so much fun mixing and matching all of these different colors, bringing them all together to create a really soft farmhouse look to my florals. I didn't want anything harsh in here. I wanted it to look like we would see natural fall colors out there where it was a lot of creamy brown tones and some ivories. And I'm just bringing it all together until I get the look that I want in my florals, making sure that I cut apart the flowers versus trying to just stick the whole thing in as a unit where you see that plastic stem. You can actually see one over to the right by my twine. I don't ever like putting them in like that. I like to separate them. Then we're gonna take that really cute burlap bow that they had where it's got this pattern on it and we're going to just glue down the first one and then on the second one we're going to cut off the tails and we're going to add that right onto the bow to make it look more full and then we're going to bring on the two tails and glue those into place to make a really pretty bow to complete the look. I'm going to be taking these four super popular pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I was able to finally get my hands on a couple of them and I'm going to turn them into a really beautiful front door hang up welcome sign. Now you could also hang this in your house if you don't put the welcome sign on it, but let's go ahead and get started by removing those bows and the tag and then we're going to paint all four of these a different color so the very first one i went with more of a rust pumpkin look i have really been loving this color this season for some reason it just really has been on my heart and then i went with a more peachier orange color on another pumpkin and then once i had that painted front and back i went ahead and moved on to the next pumpkin which i'm going to be painting yellow a really pretty mustard yellow there was something about this color as well, combining it with these two other colors that I thought it just looked so beautiful and I really loved how it popped amongst the orange colors. And I'm just making sure I go in all the grooves just like you would normally do when you paint these kind of wood signs. I love this raised detail on these wood pieces from the Dollar Tree. And then on the last one, I painted it white. Now, once I had the white on my paintbrush, I went ahead and used that to bring up that raised wood look. I'm just going in and lightly, very lightly distressing around it, adding in some white to bring that depth and texture to it and I'm trying really hard not to get it on the bottom 
part of the pumpkin. I only want to get the paint on the edges of the raised pumpkin. So on the three colors, I'm going ahead and adding white, and then on the white pumpkin, I'm adding in very lightly some brown to raise up that look. Once I had those all done, I went ahead and went in with some green, a surprise bright color. I thought this looked so cute amongst these other pretty colors for fall. And once I had those all painted, I painted back and front on both sides because I just like finishing the back sides of my projects. I don't know, it's just me. You don't have to paint them, but I like them. I went ahead and took all four of them and stacked them how I wanted them to look. And we're gonna make these little holes, making sure there's two on each each side of the pumpkin so that way we can punch them out and I'm using this tool I love this tool I featured it here before it goes through metal and wood and it is just the coolest tool because you just punch right through it and it doesn't even hurt your hand using this tool I'll link it down below if you're interested in it so once I had all of my holes all lined up and marked I went ahead and punched everything out and now I'm going to use some twine and I'm going to just simply tie them together so it has a nice hanging look and then I'm going to just keep moving down. Now you can see here when you're first drawing your holes it's really important to make sure that you align them as straight as you can while you're also getting that tilted stacked up pumpkin look just like I did. And then on the back side once I have it threaded through with the twine I went ahead and did a double knot added some hot glue to make sure they don't come untied and they stay nice and secure. And then I just worked my way down the line of the pumpkins. I had so much fun connecting these and I found that it was almost in a weird way therapeutic <laughs> doing this project. I don't know why, but I really, really love this project. Then I'm gonna repurpose those bows that originally came on these. I just zhuzhed them up a little. They were really flattened, I think, probably just from packaging and shipping. But once I added those bows back on, it really brought these pumpkins to life. And then I'm gonna take this part of this welcome sign. I'm gonna use part of that for another DIY later in this video, but I'm gonna take the welcome part off glue it right on and then we need a string to be able to hang it up so I'm going to punch two more holes at the top and add some more twine cut it tie it in place glue it in place and once it's all done you're ready to hang it up on your front door or somewhere in your home to welcome people Now this next DIY, I'm gonna be using four of these cute signs from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna pop off the Happy Fall and the Welcome, and I'm gonna use them to create a large circle. Now I have been seeing these large clocks that are, you know, taken apart, where like you don't have the gears and the hands on them, and people have been using them to stack and layer on their mantles. Listen, friends, those things are so, expensive once again where I know that we could do it so much more affordable and make it where it's high quality not just using foam core but actually using a nice sturdy thick surface like we're doing here so I took off those welcome and happy fall curved parts and you can see here that on the back side I use some hot glue some painter sticks and I'm just creating it strong enough so I can flip it over and to be able to grid out my circle. So you can see here I used a pencil and a piece of twine and I'm just holding it right in the center with the other part tied to my pencil and going all the way around in a circle. Now at this point, I don't know if you know this about these particle boards, these decor signs from the Dollar Tree. They snap really easy. So when you score it with your craft knife and you get an edge that you can push on to get that leverage it will just snap off without any problems and it is just so stinking cool that you can take these and turn these into a whole different shape now you're going to see that it's shifting and moving around the different pieces because it's not fully secured on the back side yet because I didn't want to run into a painter stick if I had glued too far over on the sides so you can see here now I'm going to go back in and add in some more supports and really just make sure it's nice and strong and all sturdy on the back side 
side. Now I will definitely recommend painting the front and the back, but before we do that first, we're gonna go ahead and take our scissors and we're gonna just trim off any rough edges around to make a complete and perfect circle. And then go back in with moving it just to make sure that you don't have any more loose corners or edges. You wanna make sure it's really secured down so that when you're moving it around, it's high quality versus it being you know, a craft that we did in our craft room. <laughs> so once you've got your circle all complete, everything's nice and sturdy, go ahead and take your white paint. Now, I don't know if you ever watch me when I'm trying to get my paint out because friends, I use it down to the very last squish of a bottle. <laughs> I am so determined to get every single drop. So you will always see me in fast speeded up sped up yep sped up motion where i'm trying to tap out the paint so i eventually finished one bottle of paint and moved on to a brand new one it's always so fun to bust open a new bottle of paint now at this point once everything's all painted white on the back and the front i'm going to go ahead and go in with a kind of a medium gray and i'm going to create some shiplap lines and then i'm going to go back in and dry brush on very very little of that same color just to create some depth and some texture to make it look like farmhouse shiplap distressed look you know that look that we all love so much <laughs> if you love farmhouse like i do now you're going to take some of these dollar tree stickers and i decided instead of going with a very bold black i wanted to soften them a little bit so i went with more of a slate gray so i'm going to just paint these numbers with my paint to create that look that I want. And then once that was dry, they peel off really easy. And I started just like this. I did the 12, six, three, nine, and then I filled in the other numbers, making sure everything was spaced out. So I wasn't struggling with trying to space things properly and having things not fit. Cause that would just not be fun if it didn't work out and you did all that work. Now I wanted to show you an option. If you really do want the hands, you can use some skewer or shish kebab sticks and you can paint them black just like this and glue them on but I have decided like I said I just want it to be just the numbers. For this project, I'm going to be using this plastic pumpkin that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree or Walmart. They have them all over the place. And the inspiration, this is gonna be a look for less. I found these galvanized and black pumpkins at Pottery Barn and I could not believe the price they were. They actually both sold out. The last one that's left is the mini one at Pottery Barn in black. And they were so expensive. Friends, we're gonna do this for a dollar, <laughs> just a dollar. And I'm gonna show you how you can make it look like galvanized metal. So what I did first is I sketched on the face. I used the inspiration from Pottery Barn's cute pumpkins. And I'm just gonna go in with my craft knife. And once you create the first initial hole, make sure you don't cut your fingers, keep it back. It cuts really easy where you can just drag it along and it just cuts out the piece that you need. The trickier part is around the mouth. That one you do have to take a little bit slow of a time coming around those curves but basically it cuts out so easy and if you feel like the craft knife is a little too tricky you could always just cut the initial hole and then come in with scissors and cut that that way as well but it cuts really easy and then once you're all done and you've cleaned up all your lines you're ready to paint it so I went ahead and took mine outside and just spray painted the whole thing a light gray color just a real quick coat on the inside and the out because you don't want to leave the orange on the inside or whatever color your pumpkin is that you picked up and you're going to make sure everything's gray and then you're going to come in with a darker gray color and you're going to just tap it on and you're going to come in with a paper towel and keep tapping 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 then you're going to add in an even darker tint you're going to go even less on these spots and you're going to tap those all into place as well just continuing to add on these layers and you want to make sure that it's spotchy looking just like this and as you've got that dark one on then next you're going to bring back in lighter colors because you want to create that depth where it makes it look like the galvanized metal 
Then once you've got the dark one, you're gonna come in with your light, tap, tap, tap until you get the look, and you're gonna go all the way down to white. Now at the very end with white, you're using almost the tiniest spots, and you're just creating that depth and raised look that you would see on galvanized metal. And then to complete the look and to make sure that there's not any issues with it, you have two different choices. You can seal it with a matte, so it looks more like a rough metal Mod Podge, or you can seal it with a glossy one and have it look shiny. If you have been doing Dollar Tree DIYs for a while, I'm sure you have seen these glass candle stem holders. <laughs> but I had an idea that I wanted to replicate a look that I saw that was on Pottery Barn. It was crazy expensive and I thought man I could totally make that for so much cheaper or more affordable I always like to say affordable instead of cheap because I don't like to be cheap I just like to have nice things that I'm not paying an arm and a leg for so I'm gonna do the same old trick add that E6000 and the glue the hot glue for the long-term short-term hold put those together and then I'm gonna take this round metal tray that you can put on your oven to cover your burners. I think it's called a burner cover. And I'm going to use some painter's tape to create a template because I don't want to spray paint this part. I like to make sure that whenever I'm using E6000 that it really does bond to the original surface and not a painted surface that can cause things to pull away over time. So I'm just going ahead, tracing it, cutting it out, and then I'm gonna take it outside. I spray painted the tray a really pretty dark gray color, and then I spray painted the glass, making sure the bottom didn't get any spray paint on that glass with white, because I wanna make sure that the glass is bonding to the metal and it's all stuck together really nice and strong. So once I've got all of my E6000 and hot glue in place, I'm gonna go ahead and just put that right on the spot where I preserved it without it having any paint on it. Once I got that done and I let that dry, I went ahead and added in some more gray to create a very farmhouse pretty look on this metal where it makes it look like metal. And then I'm gonna go back in with some brown paint and just add in a little bit of rust you don't have to do this part if this is not for you. You don't even have to do the distressing on the dark gray. You can even spray paint the whole thing white if you like that look too, but I really did love adding in some of the rusted look because like I said, these type of pedestals are so expensive. Then once you're all done painting and getting it distressed, I got some of these candles from Costco. They're always on sale this time of year. I added a wreath ring in the middle, added a candle and it's ready to go. For our next DIY, we're gonna be taking this wood sign that they have at the Dollar Tree. Now, I think it's cute as it is if you wanna use it in like a teen's room, but I wanted to use mine for Halloween time. And friends, I do not like ghouly, creepy Halloween stuff. I like things to be more whimsical. My birthday is actually on Halloween and I love Halloween. And I do decorate for Halloween, but I go very, retro whimsical looking. I like a lot of black, white, and orange, and I just love pumpkins and little kitties and cute witches with sweet faces. I don't know. Once I had it all black, I'm going to take some of my cutout vinyl from my Cricut that I cut out, and I'm just going to place those right on, and then you're set to put it out in your home and decorate with. If you are enjoying this video and you haven't yet, please do give this video a thumbs up. It really means so much to me. It actually helps out my video. It's a way to give back if you're enjoying it and you want to connect with me on a one-on-one -on -one friend level. 
giving a video a thumbs up helps the algorithm see the video and that people are enjoying it and then they recommend it to other people so thank you so much for giving my video a thumbs up and if you haven't please do click that little thumb for this project we are going to be making a lantern and we're going to take these long paint sticks these painter stirrer sticks. I hear people call them all kinds of different things, but they come from the home improvement stores locally to you. And we are gonna take the long ones and cut down eight of them. These are gonna become the side structures for our lantern that we're making. And then once you've got eight of those all cut down to the size that you need, and they need to all be the same size, you're then going to go ahead and take some wood stakes that you would use in your garden. I see a lot of people use these around their gardens, but these are wood stakes that you can also pick up from your home improvement store. And I'm gonna be using a combination of wood glue and hot glue for that long-term, short-term hold to make sure that it nice and strong bonds together. We are gonna have six of those. This is going to be the base of our lantern. I'm gonna leave all the measurements down below so that it's not making this video too complicated. So if you're needing the measurements, go ahead down to the description box and you'll see them down there. But I'm gonna go ahead and glue all of those six pieces together to create a very pretty, nice, solid base. Now you could do these with the painter sticks, I decided to use these wood stakes instead because I just liked how they were more substantial, thicker, sturdier looking. I just liked how they looked. But again, you can use painter sticks if you would like. So once you got all of those all wiped and cleaned up, because you could see there that I was pulling off some of that extra glue that kind of squirted out, you're gonna go ahead and start gluing on the sides. So again, I'm using the wood glue with the hot glue, long-term, short-term hold. And then to make it really strong and sturdy, we are gonna take our staple gun and we are just going to staple in a, two staples on it to make sure that it's nice and strong. And by the time we're done with this thing, it is gonna be so sturdy and it is just gonna be so pretty on your front porch or wherever you decide to use it in your home. So now I'm putting on the other side and I'm just making sure that the sides match up and then I'm gonna move on to the next and I'm just gonna keep putting the two corners on, making sure that the sides match up with each other so that it is nice and smooth on the sides. And then you can see even as I'm going up, I'm putting little dots of that wood glue and hot glue to make sure that the top and the bottom and the sides are all glued together and then adding two staples at the bottom. So as I get around the corner to my fourth leg, I noticed something started to happen with this and I thought I would just mention it all so you would know. And I noticed that towards the top, you could see that they're starting to bow in towards the top. So when you go to glue on these support pieces, which I'm doing right here, I cut down eight of these smaller painter sticks because I wanted to wrap them around the bottom and the top to create a nice, pretty finished look and a structure to it. I cut eight of these, but you can see here that it's a little bit not all the way up to the edge because I want, again, I'm gonna show you in a second, add another piece to it. But up here at the top, when I went to go put up this piece, you can see that it's not fully lining up. So I had to actually pull it out from each other and make sure that it was not crooked. And that just happens with wood. Sometimes it'll just shift on you. So you're gonna see here that as I staple it, I'm gonna pull it out. You can see what I'm talking about. It wants to kind of collapse in a little bit. So just make sure you pull it out, glue it into place, that hot glue, so it'll hold it into place while the, the wood glue dries, and then just staple it. And then I just flipped it over and did it on the other side, making sure everything was nice and straight and all glued and stapled together. Now, now, like I said earlier, you saw that I had a little bit of a spacing between those top parts. And I'm gonna show you in a second, I'm gonna fill them in with some really pretty smaller square pieces of wood that I just happen to have in my craft room. You don't have to do this. You could make those painter sticks that are coming around the bottom and the top the exact length but I wanted to have a little bit more detail, so I'll show you that in a second. But right now at the top, we're gonna to take some more of those wood stakes, and I'm going to use my miter box. Now there's a straight cut, and then there's a 45 degree angle cut, and you can see that I'm just going to cut at an angle, and I'm going to allow this to create a miter edge at the top 
which is going to make it look so high end and pretty. I love this little cutting toolbox. I'm gonna link it down below as well as my staple gun. I get asked about it all the time. And then see here, all the four pieces all cut with that little side angle. Now they are all gonna miter together beautifully and look super high end. So here I am, I'm adding some more of that wood glue, hot glue, and I'm just gonna go around making sure every single side is pressed together really well so there's not a big gap. And then if you have any glue squirt out from pushing it together, just again, wipe that away so it has a nice clean finish. And then once you get around to that last side, I'm gonna set this over to the side just for a minute while I go back over to my actual lantern and add on this piece right here. So here is the piece I was talking about. I had this in my craft and I thought this would be really pretty. So on those eight pieces that I cut down to size to wrap around the bottom and the top, four of them I cut a little bit shorter and the other four cut a little bit longer so that I can put this piece on there. I thought this would look so pretty to add on this little detail where you have this little corner that's kind of popped up and it's just gonna fit in there nicely. I'm adding in some more hot glue and some wood glue once again because I just wanna make sure that this is built really well. And I mean, this cost nothing. At this point, these are just seriously painter sticks, stirrer sticks, and these wood stakes. And look at how we can build the most cool things from it. Now, I could leave it like this, or we could make it a little more special. You know how I like to do it here on my channel. I like to take it a little further and just challenge myself a little bit more each time. So I'm gonna take these long sticks. They're not shish kebab sticks, they're I always forget what these ones are called. Leave a comment down below. I think steaks? Nope, that's not it either. Either way, these long shish kebab sticks, we're just gonna go with that name, but they're the really long sticks and I'm just gonna cut them down to size because I want to create a really pretty crisscross design work on the inside of this lantern and just add a little more something special to it. I thought that this would be really pretty. So you're gonna need two for each opening on your lantern. And you can see here that I'm simply just measuring it on the inside of the box first for my first cut. And now I'm just going back and cutting everything down to size so that it all fits perfectly inside of those spots. Once I had enough of them all cut, I'm gonna add in some hot glue into the corners and then I'm going to put them at an angle. I'm gonna go one way Make sure you hold it into place so it's nice and set. Add a little more glue on top of it so it's nice and glued in place so it doesn't move around on you or lift up. And then you're gonna go the other direction, the other corners, and you're gonna add some more hot glue and then just press them down. Now these are gonna wanna not lay flat that second one. So you're gonna have to hold it down for a little bit while the glue dries. But again, this was super simple to do. So once I went all the way around with all four of those, I added some glue to the top and then I put on my miter top that we made earlier and at this point it just looks so pretty. I was so excited for this project and as my family was coming down to check on me to see how I was doing with this project, they all started saying, oh it's a lantern, <laughs> which I had this thing for lanterns. They weren't sure at first what it was. My husband thought at first it was a trophy box, which I laughed because you never know with me. <laughs> so once I gave it a nice coat of paint, I'm gonna take some rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm actually gonna braid it. I thought it would be really pretty to have a nice, thick, substantial rope on this. I braided it, brought the ends together and just hot glued them so that they were nice and secured. And then I actually used one rope bundle from the Dollar Tree. I had took three long pieces that were equal length and then this was the little piece that was left over. I just unwrapped it and I'm gonna use that to bring it all together at the end, those little scraps that you saw me there pulling apart from the rope. So I wrapped it around the top of my lantern. I added in some hot glue to make sure it stays there forever. I don't want it to come off. And then I'm gonna add some more hot glue right here and that scrap piece of rope that was left over after I braided these. I'm gonna just wrap that around a few times to make a very pretty finished look up at the top. I loved how this turned out so, so much. And then, you don't have to do this part, you can skip it, but y'all know me, I just love a little roughed up edges, especially because I love that coastal look.
For our next project, we are going to be using these three signs from the Dollar Tree, this hula skirt that I picked up during the summertime, and then this wood pumpkin. Now you could always use raffia that they have at the Dollar Tree, but I love these hula skirts because they don't have like pleat lines in them, and I really love that. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to pop off the welcome sign and then we're going to put two together. Use some painter sticks, popsicle sticks, whatever you want, but I'm going to use painter sticks. Glue them so that they sturdy up that seam line and staple with your staple gun if you are using the painter sticks. And then we're going to take another one, snap it right in half, and we're going to create a upper part for the arms. Now if you can't tell, we are making a giant scarecrow to put on your front porch. Now I will say, I do have one regret about making this. I wish that I actually had doubled up the middle part where the stomach and the legs are it's almost too thin I wish I had maybe did two at the bottom two at the top and then the one split for the arms at the top so that is my one regret if you have a whole bunch of these scarecrow signs you could go ahead and double them up but if not you only have three you can do it the way I did it and it turns out just fine I just like I said I wish that it was just a little bit thicker towards the bottom and you'll see once it's all done at the end how it could look even better if I had doubled them up just a little bit more so you can tell as I've been talking I wrap some fabric around the bottom part to create the denim and then I'm going to wrap some fabric around the middle part for the shirt part and now I'm adding on the sleeves and I'm just taking it flipping it around cutting it gluing on the sides making sure everything is pulled nice and tight and as I was making this I started thinking I I felt like this almost had a Dolly Parton vibe <laughs> to her you'll see her hair at the end it just reminds me of Dolly when she would wear pigtails back in the 70s I don't know what it was about this but I just kept thinking oh it's like my Dolly Parton scarecrow which I thought that was pretty cute so here I am I'm just going to take my raffia and I'm going to sneak that right on the back side and I'm going to make sure I secure it all into place and then to make sure it stays on there and doesn't have any issues I'm going to take another little piece of fabric and I'm just going to glue that right on there just to hold it all in place and then I did it on the other side of the arm too making sure that it was all nice and snug and secure and then if anything is too long I just trimmed it off and made sure it was the right length that I wanted for my scarecrow hand and then if you missed it earlier on the fabric on the front side I snipped it so I kind of frayed the edges just a little bit so it makes it look more like a scarecrow then up at the top I'm gonna go ahead and take some extra fabric I had a square piece I cut it right down the middle like a triangle and I'm gonna glue the triangle longest part down first and then I'm gonna pull it back and then I'm gonna just glue on the side you can see here that I'm pulling it back and gluing it just right there to pin it down to make it look like it's a big collar on a shirt and I'm gonna take some buttons I added three buttons on the front down by the collar and then I'm gonna take a little bit more of this raffia grass and I'm going to tuck it underneath to give it like it's popping out from the under part of the shirt as if it's stuffed with this hay or raffia <laughs> and then we're going to move on to the pumpkin's face so first i painted it a really pretty creamy orange color and then i'm coming in with some pink and this is why i said it made me think of dolly and you'll see at the end with the hair but i wanted to make it a girl scarecrow i thought that would be really cute so i made a smile and i'm actually copying the same look that was on the original scarecrow signs that came from the Dollar Tree. I thought it had the sweetest face that I'm just enlarging it on this pumpkin. So I did the rosy cheeks, the smile with the little X's on it, and then the eyes. I thought the eyes were so sweet. And then I'm also adding on the nose, just how they had it, like a little triangle. I went in with the darker color first, and then I came in with a lighter color because I wanted it to create almost like an outline on the nose so it really stood out on the other orange part of the face. Now I'm going to add some hot glue and I'm going to stick that down on there. Make sure it's nice and secure. I forgot to show it but I actually flipped it over on the back side and did a staple gun on that spot just to make sure it stayed on. And then now 
I'm taking the grass skirt and you can see that I just slid it right off of the twine that it was on. I glued the top part up at the stem of the pumpkin and then I'm now adding on a little piece of twine so it looks like my little scarecrow girl, my Dolly Parton has some pigtails. I just thought this was so cute and it's really fun and simple to do. This probably took me about 20 minutes to do the whole thing and then I just added that on and then the extra that I had left over from me cutting off the excess of the piggy tails, I just went ahead and added that towards the top to give her some really cute bangs. I just thought that that was so fun to add on the bangs and it really completed her look. Now remember, like I said, if you wanna double up her legs and her chest, you can always add on two more pieces to complete the look where she looks a little bit more full and it was ready to go up in the front of my house. This next project is super simple and easy to accomplish. We're gonna take this cutting board that you can pick up from the Dollar Tree for just $1. We're gonna spray paint it orange or whatever color you want. Now I will recommend that when you spray paint it, it will want to peel off. So I ended up Mod Podging the whole thing once I got my vinyl stickers on. I went ahead and cut these out on the Cricut and then I just stuck them on because they were so big. I didn't need to use the transfer tape. Plus I would, didn't want to pull up any more of that paint. Once I had those on, I went ahead and Mod Podge the whole thing, and now I'm gonna decorate the top and really bring it to life. I'm gonna use some of this really beautiful ribbon they have at the Dollar Tree right now, and I'm just gonna twist it around on the top like a scarf, and then I'm gonna add on a bow that I assembled, not the traditional way. I'll link my bow video at the end of this video if you're interested, and down below, because I have a very specific way that I do bows. I always like the tails to look really pretty and polished. Then I'm gonna add on some greenery to really finish the look. And once it was all done, you can display it anywhere in your home or even in your kitchen. It's so adorable. I took this silver tray from the Dollar Tree and I knew that I could turn it into something really special. I saw this really pretty inspiration on Pinterest where someone took a really large silver tray and they put it on their front door and I wanted to make a smaller version with this. I thought how cute could this be sitting in a, like a butler's pantry or right at your entryway. So I used some paint. You could use chalk paint if you want to erase it and do it again later on for a different saying on it. But I I decided to just use black paint and then I went and sketched on what I wanted it to say and now I'm going to hand paint on welcome to our home it's kind of funny because friends I am a hard critic with my handwriting and I know so many of you leave so many wonderful comments about how you love my handwriting but when I was doing the word welcome I did the W way too big and it kind of caused the E to look crunch once I say it out loud I think you're all gonna notice it but I hear you all all the time saying that you don't have beautiful handwriting. The truth is it just takes playing with it and practicing and I just think it's just a form of art that is so lost and I used to practice my handwriting all the time when I was a kid. My mom had the most beautiful calligraphy handwriting and I just loved it. All right, here I am using the Cropodile tool. I'm gonna link it down below if you're interested in it. This is one of my all-time favorite tools because it punches through metal without any issues at all. I mean, it doesn't even hurt your hand to use this thing. There's something about the spring mechanics of this tool that allows it to just punch through everything. It is the coolest thing, and like I said earlier, it can work for eyelets and anything else that you would want to use to punch a hole in, or even belts. My husband, sometimes if he has a belt that he wants to you know, take in a notch or whatever, you can even punch through leather. It's so crazy how well this tool works. Okay. I punched those holes for a reason because I wanted to take some of the Dollar Tree bead garland that I love so much. I love when it comes out this time of year. And I'm just twisting it and coiling it all around the edges of the silver tray 
because I want it to look like it's a vine that is growing on it for the fall season. I just think that this is so cute and you can decorate it however you want. You can add on whatever colors you want. You can go as elaborate or as simple as you would like. And then you just keep playing with it until you get it to a place that you would like. If you love working with florals, this is a really fun DIY to try out and to display somewhere in your home. You could even put your family's name and really just customize it however you would like. Once you've got everything all situated on there, I went ahead and also added a little pumpkin, some berries, and then I decided to add on one more bow. I love this ribbon. I picked it up from Joann's a long time ago, and I just love that it's a cream with a green. And then when you're all done, go ahead and display in your home. This next project is so easy to do. We're gonna take this round sign and these cute witch legs that you can get at the Dollar Tree, and we are going to snap off, or pop off, better yet, the sticks that we have on the witch's legs, and then the sign, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna give it a couple cones of yellow paint. Now I decided to do three because I really wanted the paint to be bright and to not have anything popping through from the previous backside of the sign. And then you're gonna take the witch's legs and you are going to simply glue them into the place that you would like. So at this point, the yellow circle is going to look like the moon and the witch's legs are going to be glued on super cute to the side and you wanna make sure there's enough room so that you can put a really cute saying or quote onto the side of your circle. So I'm going to sketch out the word witch because I wanted to make sure that the letters are kind of fun and you know, got some personality and wonky looking. And then I'm gonna come back in with my Dollar Tree stickers and I'm gonna add in the word the and then the words is in. So we have the sign all together that says the witch is in. And at this point, once I've got all of my letters stuck on with my stickers, I'm gonna go back in with my fine tip brush and my black paint, and I'm gonna just take my time just going over it and filling in where I did with my pencil lines to complete the word witch. This part is so fun, and I just made sure I took my time like I do on all of my paint with my lettering whenever I do this part. And it's so fun because you can make it as thick or whatever style you want, and I don't know, it's just me. I hope you all give it a try and do this hand painting every once in a while on your projects. If you have a Cricut, or a silhouette, that's always a really great option too. Or if you have some stickers from your scrapbook collection, paper collection, that will also always work. Then when I was done, I made sure I sealed it all with Mod Podge because I wanted to make sure it had a nice seal. And then on the sides, I also added those little dash and dots. I think those are so cute. And then at the top, I added a really cute gingham bow with the Dollar Tree ribbon that I picked up this fall. Then last, I'm gonna take that existing stick that we had on one of the witch's legs, and we are going to glue it right in the center. Now you could skip this part and just hang it up on your door, or you could glue it on and stake it in your garden. And then to finish it, nail it down to hold it in place. For this next DIY, I actually had some inspiration come from Pottery Barn. Friends, sometimes the prices there, I just can't get over them. I knew we could make this for pennies. So I'm gonna take one of these stacking blocks and I'm gonna cut it down to where it's a perfect square where I think it's a like three fourths of an inch by a three fourths of an inch. And then we're gonna glue on with some E6000 and some hot glue for that short term, long term hold. And we're gonna glue two of them to the side of this little square. We're trying to make sure that it's long enough of a bar to be able to put the glass hurricane jar that you can get from the Dollar Tree in their frame and candle section. And then we're gonna rotate it to the other side and add two more so now you'll have a big X. And then at this point, you're gonna put your hurricane glass jar onto the X and we're going to add on the sides to hold it in place. Again, I've seen a couple friends do this, but I wanted you all to see, don't ever pay those high prices <laughs> that stores have. I do love Pottery Barn, I won't lie. I think some of their stuff is pretty. I think I've bought something from them a couple of times, but I, it's always on sale. And 
I just can't believe that this particular item that they wanted, you know, $30 or more. And here I am, I'm making it for like a dollar and 10 cents. So at this point I decided to paint it black. You could always leave it the wood, but I wanted to make sure that it had a nice clean finish. And then when you're done, add a candle and put it out for display. For this project, we're gonna be using this super popular gold basket that they have at the Dollar Tree right now. I love these, they come in a couple different shapes. And I decided that this basket has such large holes at the bottom that things just fall through it. Now, if you were putting just regular paper in it for like a paper holder, you'd be fine. But what I decided to do was line the bottom with some of these popsicle sticks in different sizes. I used these really large ones that I picked up from Walmart, and now I'm going in with tongue depressors to add a support at the bottom of these sticks to be able to sit nicely inside of the basket. So you can see here that I have three rows of supportive beams, we're just gonna call it that. And then when I flip it over, it's going to fit nicely inside of the grooves. And now you can put more than just paper inside of these baskets. Now I wanna make it look more appropriate for fall, so I'm gonna use a really pretty farmhouse dark tone to this. I'm gonna create a stain using some paint, brown, black, and some water, and just mix it together until I like the look of it. And then I'm just gonna go over it until I like the stain color. Once it was dry, I went ahead and took my pencil and I'm sketching on the word thankful because I thought that that would be really pretty to add to it. And then I'm just going back in with a fine tip brush and some white paint, and I'm taking my time going over it. Now, one of the fun things about hand painting letters just like this is that it just really develops a fun skill. The more you practice, the better you get. And I'm not super great at it, but I'm really good at freehanding and looking at something. So I looked at this word thankful with somebody else who was really good with calligraphy and I just sketched it until I liked it and then went over with my white paint. Now I wanna make sure my basket's gonna stay so I'm using a tool called the Cropodile. I talked about it in my last video and a couple of my videos in the past. It's my favorite tool. I punched some holes out and then I used some twine to thread it all together. The Cropodile goes through any metal and any wood, which is so awesome. Then on the sides, I created some handles using some rope from the Dollar Tree and then I'm gonna wrap around the ends where I brought them together with some twine to finish off the look. And then you're ready to display it somewhere on a table in your home. For this DIY, I'm gonna be taking some of these stacking blocks from the kids section at the Dollar Tree and then these wooden pumpkins that there are five in a pack and we're only gonna be needing four of them because we're gonna be using them to spell out the word fall. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna take some of their putty that they have at the Dollar Tree and we're gonna fill in those holes and then we're gonna take these stacking blocks and we are going to line them all up. Now you're gonna need 12, two rows of 12. So you're gonna need 24 of them, but, and you, you can use the light one and the dark ones because that's how they come in the box. I just happen to have a lot of these dark brown ones. But what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of glue. I flatten it on the table and then flatten it on its side to make sure it's nice and straight as possible. Now, after doing this, I realized that you could do, instead of 12 long, you could do 11 long. It won't be as much hangover. You'll see at the end what I'm talking about. But if you like the way that I did it, you can stick with doing the 12 stacking blocks like I did. Okay, now once those are glued together, we're gonna go ahead and take these long painter sticks. They're a little bit thicker than the normal smaller ones where there's 10 in a pack. This one comes three in a pack for a dollar at your home improvement stores. I get mine from Home Depot. And then I'm gonna take my miter box and I'm gonna cut it down to size because one is not long enough to reach the full length of the 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that down to what I need with my miter box. I'll link this down below if you're interested in this tool. 
I love it. I use it here all the time on my channel. And then I'm going to glue the two ends together to make sure it's the right length for the whole thing. Now it was kind of hard to get this whole thing in the shot, so I do apologize that it's not fully all the way in it, but you're going to go ahead and glue those down on it and then you're going to make sure your pumpkin can fit inside without it having any issues or being too tight and it's so amazing because it was like meant to all fit together where it was the right size for the stacking blocks and the painter stick and then the pumpkin to fit in the middle so once you have everything all glued together go ahead and pick your paint color that you would like now I'm going to do a couple different tints of painting. I couldn't decide on where I wanted to land. First I thought I would do a dark slate color and then I thought mm, that's too dark and then you'll see in a little bit I'm going to actually end up lightening it. <laughs> I just kept playing with it. So while that black paint was drying I'm going to go ahead and sand off the extra that was coming out of those little holes to fill them and I'm going to paint all of my pumpkins white on both sides and then here I am I'm going back in with a lighter I decided to go mm, let me let some of that black pop through and I'm going to put on some of this brownish gray color that I put together and that still even ended up not being what I wanted so you're going to see me paint it one more time this is just the creative process I know you all get it if you're a crafter like I am we just keep playing with it until we get it the way we love it so I wanted again to get a lighter gray color so I'm going to just paint the letters F-A-L-L -L for fall and once those are all dry I can add them to my pumpkins and you'll see me do that in a minute. Now here I am I'm gonna go ahead and put some hot glue and put in my pumpkins and I didn't put them flat like all the way in and just flat to the bottom. I had some kind of twisted a little bit to the side because I thought that was cute and it added a little more personality to the pumpkins and then here my letters are they're dry and I'm gonna go ahead and stick those right on. Now I did cover the pumpkin and the letters with Mod Podge because I wanted to make sure they stayed on there. Once it was all dry, I went ahead and took some of my grass skirt that was left over from the summertime. I love that because it's really long strands. If you had any of those grass tree skirts from the Dollar Tree, they're so great to tie bows with. And then I went ahead and added those on and here I am once again <laughs> adding color to the base. It was at this point when I finally fell in love with it. It had this very natural fall look. By the way, if you look at my hand, you can see a massive blister. I burnt myself while making some of these DIYs and it really hurt. <laughs> This project is so easy. Now I know a lot of us picked these up when these were first brought out to the Dollar Tree and they still have some of these at the Dollar Tree. I found one actually recently. So I don't know if it's an item they're carrying all the time, but I picked it up knowing that this jar could be turned into a cute pumpkin fall Halloween look and you can do whatever colors you want. I decided to go with white on mine but it could also be really cute if you painted it orange as well and I'm just going to go in with a couple coats of my paint color that I desire and just follow along that line and once it's dry I'm going to sketch on the face that I want a nice happy pumpkin and once I've got all of my lines all in place ready to go I'm going to come back in with an angled brush and I'm going to paint in the eyes and the smile and you could add a nose if you want I decided not to add a nose I don't know why I just liked him more without him having a nose on it and I thought that this was so sweet and just take your time on your corners if you make a mistake it's not a big deal you can always just touch it back up again because we're working with paint always let it dry if you want to do a touch up let it dry first really well and then go back in and touch up any lines you might have accidentally gone over. Then at the top to give it some more detail so it's not so plain I added some twine and then little pieces of fabric cut into triangles to make a banner across the top. I thought this was a very sweet whimsical touch to put at the top of this mason jar pumpkin and then to finish the look I added on a couple of twine bows on the sides to make it look so whimsical and fun.
For our next project, this is going to be more of a boho farmhouse fall look. I'm going to be taking these long wood signs. I love these because they are actually wood and I'm going to be marking off different sizes and I'm going to be using my miter box and cutting them all down. This is what they're going to look like. You're going to want them scaling all the way down. For our next project, we're going to be taking one of these cutting mats from the Dollar Tree. I think these mats are so versatile. I love them so much. So we're going to be using one of them and a piece of paper. I took a piece from a book that I'm always pulling apart using it to paint on these pages. I glue them all together. You'll see them in a little bit where I glued a bunch together. But for this time, I'm gonna take a piece of this book paper. I'm gonna fold it in half and then I'm gonna sketch out a half of an apple. Take your time on this one. You can even print up some type of an apple shape where it's a silhouette of an apple. And then you're just gonna cut that out and we're gonna do it where it's, like I said, the half of the apple, so that way it's perfect on both sides. Then once you've got that cut out, you're gonna go ahead and with a Sharpie marker and you're gonna trace on six of these onto your cutting mat, and then you're going to simply cut them all out. Now the reason why we're gonna need six of these is because we are gonna turn this into one of those kind of apples or pumpkins that you will see. A lot of times people make them in books where they take the two ends of the books and they bring them together and it turns into this 3D shaped apple. Well, I had this idea that we could do it with the cutting mats where we can make a 3D type apple by taking these apple shapes and folding them in half and then bringing the sides together to create that 3D shape. And so here I am, I've got them all folded in half and I'm going to take my stapler and I'm going to simply just staple two of the sides together and then I'm going to open that back up, go to the one that hasn't had anything stapled to, and I just keep adding them on. So you see here I'm flattening it down and then I'm going to get the next one and staple that in and then flattening it down and then add in the next one. So that way the sides are all butted up next to each other as I keep adding in a new apple piece. So that way it has a nice 3D effect. Now keep in mind as you get closer to the end, it's going to be harder to staple that because it just gets a little bit thicker and stronger as you go. So just keep taking your time with your stapler and making sure that you get it nice and secure. And if it doesn't, if it wants to come apart, you can pull the staple out and then staple again until you get a nice good staple. Then I took it outside and I spray painted the whole thing white. I wish that I had red spray paint on hand, but I didn't. But I went ahead and spray painted it white and then went back in with an acrylic paint and then painted it red then. But if you have a red spray paint on hand, even better. Then I'm going to take one of these little tree logs that you can see or these little um, branch cuts that you can get at the Dollar Tree. They have a little bag of these. They're so darling and they're in the floral section. And then I just tied some raffia around it. I added in some of those leaves. I forgot to mention too, I put down the little... Um, stem of my apple with some E6000 and some hot glue just to make sure it really stayed on there nice and strong. And then I'm going to add in some greenery that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I love pulling off all these little bits and pieces because when you add them all together, they just make it look so much more store-bought. So I've got some leaves, some berries on it, and then I even have some of the little wheat pieces and some raffia and some leaves. I just, I love that when they look all clustered together. Then once you're all done, you're ready to display it on a table and just have fun with it. All right, now once I had sanded everything down real quick, I went ahead and started painting. Now the reason why I am sanding it first is because I really wanna make sure that the paint bonds well to these pieces. And we're gonna be creating an ombre effect. I love ombre and I love doing it with paint. I think it is the coolest thing ever to do an ombre effect. And this is a boho fall farmhouse look to these. So I'm starting off with a really pretty rusty orange and then I'm just gonna keep adding adding in white and keep lessening the color. So you're gonna see here that I'm doing 
two blocks in not the exact same scale down next size. I'm kind of jumping over a couple and making sure they're kind of staggered in size. I don't want them to be too close as I'm painting those two colors together. You'll see towards the end what I mean by that. So I'm just, I'm going to continue to keep adding in the white, keep lessening the color, lightening it, lightening it, lightening it all the way down to almost a creamy white color and it is just going to look so stinking cool when we put it all together at the end. Make sure you do two coats of paint. That's the reason why you can see my paint still sitting here and I'm not just lessening it on one of the plates because I want to make sure I can go back and add it a second time. So here I am. I'm going to take one of these signs from the Dollar Tree that has the scarecrow on it and I'm gonna just snap it in half. I scored it with my craft knife first, and then I'm cleaning it up, and I'm gonna add on some scrapbook paper. I found this really pretty buffalo check black and white paper, and I'm gonna make sure I extend the length of it because this is longer than a 12 inch piece, and then I'm going to flip it over where the pattern is on that scarecrow, and I'm gonna just Mod Podge that right on there. Now you don't have to do this step, but I decided to go ahead and Mod Podge all the pieces because I wanted to make sure that I didn't have anything scratch or chip over time. Now we're going to start assembling it. We are going to be staggering them in the way that we'd like them to be. And as you're putting them on, you're going to glue them and you're going to flip them over and add on some staples with your staple gun to make sure they're on there nice and strong. I just think that this is such a fun, fun DIY to do if you love an ombre effect and that modern boho vibe especially for fall. And then once I was all done painting, stapling and gluing, I went ahead, added some logs and added on this extra beaded garland. This next DIY is so easy to do. You're gonna take however many cans you wanna use and whatever size you would like to do. And I took them outside and just sprayed them down really quickly with a really pretty orange color. Then I'm gonna take some of that scrapbook paper that you're seeing me use here a lot on my channel. I love this buffalo check black and white. I just think it's so pretty for the fall. And I'm gonna just cut it down to size and then I'm going to glue it around the cans. Now what makes these so fun is that these are such a great thing to make. If you wanna make treats for someone that you have not seen in a long time, you can hang it on their doorknob because it's gonna have a cute little handle and you can put treats inside of it, a sweet little note, and you could just take these around to people that you love, that you've been missing, especially since many of us have been social distancing, and it is just such a fun thing to be able to do for someone. You could also use these as party favors if you are not social distancing as much. I know some people are feeling more comfortable getting back out there, so whatever your status is, these are just so fun to be able to fill them with treats or even a little plant, whatever you want. Now here I am, again, you using that crocodile and I'm going to go in and do a double hole punch so that I can put on my handle. I went through all of them and I'm going to just go on one side and then align it to the other side and punch my holes. I love this tool once again. Like I said, it goes through wood and metal and it just it's no struggle at all. Then I'm going to use that bead garland from the Dollar Tree that I love so much and I'm just going to add that right on to all of the cans. And then I'm going to take the buttons from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to pick out a whole bunch of orange ones and just glue those right onto the front of one of the cans. I thought it would be fun just to dress this one up. For this DIY, we are going to be taking this long wood sign that you can get from the Dollar Tree. They have these around the summertime and I've been seeing some of them in different styles. So they are still having these in stores. I found these recently in my Dollar Tree. And we're going to take my miter box and we're going to use a 45 degree angle and we're going to cut two pieces. This is going to be the piece left over we don't need. Two pieces that we like the height of them, one a little taller, one a little shorter 
and then we're gonna flip it the other way and we're gonna do a 45 degree cut again to create a rooftop. Now these signs, I've seen so many people do them so many different ways and I thought it would be really cute to make these into little homes that you can use on a tiered tray or on a shelf and it's just so fun because it only cost me a dollar. Now I picked up this paper pad from Joann's, I had a really great coupon for it and it had so many beautiful prints for the fall time and I'm going to just take out this taupey brown buffalo check paper and this scroll font paper. So now what I'm doing is I'm showing how I trace out my house. I like to make it one continuous piece versus trying to cut out all these different pieces of paper. And then you have weird seam lines. So what I'm doing is I started flat, traced the roof, rotated it, traced the other side of the roof, rotated it again, and now I'm going to take my ruler and come back in and make the connecting joints where the side of the house is. Then you're going to take your scissors, simply cut it out and glue it onto your house. See how it has a nice seamless look all the way around it because you've wrapped it versus having a bunch of different pieces of paper and it avoids you having to paint the house a white color or whatever. It just takes away one step. Now for the roof, we're going to take some of those really thick, long depressor sticks that you can pick up at Walmart. They're really big. And I'm going to just simply cut them down to the size that I need. We need two different sides because on the roof, we want them to be able to miter into each other or meet up. So one has to be just a hair longer than the other one. And then I decided to do one rooftop where it has more of a darker black roof. And then the other one is more of a really pretty walnut or amber looking rooftop. So I'm just putting those on with some glue and then a really cute detail is taking a nail and first you're going to hammer it in straight to the side where it's going to let it get in there and then I rotated a little bit and hammered it the rest of the way. Now on the front of the house you can stop there or we can continue to keep adding some little details. I added some little greenery, some twine, and then this little cute sunflower that I found at the Dollar Tree in their craft section for fall time. And then on the little house, I just added some more twine and a bow to the front of it. This DIY is super simple. We're gonna take this wood wreath and these berry stems from their floral section. They bring them out around the fall time and I just love these. I saw a really expensive wreath that had berries just like this on it and thought, no way, I could totally make that so much cheaper. The wreath that I found was like 70, 80 bucks and I'm gonna make this for $12 using all of these berry florals from the Dollar Tree and as well as this wreath I also picked up from the Dollar Tree. So it's really simple. We're just gonna keep tucking them in, alternating between the two different colors because there is a yellow greenish floral one and then there's also an orangey yellow one. So we're just gonna keep alternating them back and forth until we fill the whole thing in. And then when it's done, you're ready to hang it up and to display it in your home. And it just looks so pretty hanging up. I hope you enjoyed today's mega video and you felt inspired to get in your craft space and make some new things. Leave a comment down below to let me know what was your favorite or if you had several favorites. And until the next episode, bye friends.